It is estimated that almost 3 million people go fishing in the UK every year. Angling can provide a welcome relief from life, allowing people to get away from the stresses of work and enjoy some relaxing time outdoors. It's a way where hundreds of thousands of people connect with, like, with nature. And for some people living in urban environments, it is their connection uh, with nature. It has had proven health, particularly mental health benefits. I think that's one of the reasons that the government were uh, keen to allow us to continue fishing through the COVID lockdowns and the rest of it. They recognise the value of people getting out, particularly lockdown uh, as we were in quite a severe way and, and connecting with, with nature. But over the years, animal rights groups have begun looking at the ethics behind angling. After all, the fish are often killed, or at least maimed, all in the name of sport. Angling is a violent, bloody and cruel activity and there is absolutely no need for humans to eat fish. There is no need for us to entertain ourselves by torturing aquatic life. And if we just try to think that we did to a dog what we're doing to the fish, we'll be outraged. If we tricked a dog to swallow a hook, to mutilate themselves, if we would yank a dog to an environment where they would be struggling to breathe, everyone would be outraged. So why are we doing it to fish? The crux of the angling debate centres around whether fish feel pain. Many anglers argue that they don't, saying that fish have a different kind of reaction to mammals. If an animal doesn't have a neocortex, how could it feel pain, goes the argument. But the flip side to this is that fish do have a reaction to pain, even if it is different from that felt by humans. As one source put it, saying fish can't feel pain because they have no neocortex is like saying fish can't travel because they have no legs. There's a lot, a big body of scientific evidence that actually shows that fish respond completely differently to other warm-blooded creatures. In fact, they don't possess uh, a thing called a neocortex, which enables them to make the distinction between uh, a, a, a sensation that causes a panic or fright uh, and, uh, and, 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 and pain. You can em emphasise this by uh, just looking at what happens if, if a fish is hooked. Uh, if, if you and I were hooked and someone was pulling us towards them, you would tend to move in the direction of the, 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 the way you're being pulled in order to minimise the pain. A fish doesn't, it charges off in the exact opposite direction. The absurd notion, which was perpetuated for many years, that fish don't feel pain, um, was laughable and remains so, and of course has been proven to be absolute nonsense. These are higher vertebrates. They simply happen to be aquatic vertebrates. So why wouldn't they feel pain? So I don't think that we can discard the idea that once those animals have been hooked, that they aren't in some discomfort as they're being removed from the water. There's no, there doesn't seem to be any doubt about that. Um, there were further concerns. I mean, if you take an animal out of its environment, you disturb its behavior, you potentially impact its border ecology. Um, some of those fish may have uh, home ranges, some of them even territories if they're, if they're breeding animals. And if you take them away from those, that may, ha may have far reaching consequences. So I think that, yeah, there's, there's, that is a, an, another issue and one which bears scrutiny. Anglers in Britain have historically responded well to environmental concerns, adapting their practices to new regulations. I was an angler as a young person. Um, so this was in the early 70s. Um, angling has changed tremendously since then. Um, it was shortly after that period that there were quite uh, forthright campaigns to ask anglers to give up uh, discarding their line, which was a problem in terms of other angle, uh, animals becoming entangled in it, um, to use barbless hooks um, and to, you know, give up on lead shot, which they'd use to, you know, weigh down their lines and so on and so forth. And looking back on it, we weren't as appreciative as we should have been, I think, as how rapidly the angling fraternity did respond to those requests. Um, and I'm quite confident now that I can say that when I walk the, the riverbanks uh, of the Itchen and anywhere else, it's an enormous rarity to find any discarded line. Believe it or not, carp anglers now regularly carry a small antiseptic bottle just in case there's any mouth damage or, or even damage caused by a cormorant or, or, or some other uh, uh, thing that uh, a fish has come up against. So the standards of fish welfare in this country are as high as anywhere in the world. But there have been issues, with some angling groups calling for certain fish-eating species to be culled as they disrupt the fish populations. There are certain 
very small sections of the angling fraternity that seem intolerant of fish eating species, uh, otter, cormorant, goosander, so on and so forth. And there are calls to remove the protective legislation that there is for these species and to instigate culling. Um, but not from all sections of the angling fraternity. Um, <clears throat> so I think that those are relatively marginalised, and let's hope they remain that way. I, I, I hope it's, a, it, it's a, a hobby where we can see passive management of wildlife. If you don't want otters in your trout lakes, put a fence around it. So will it ever be possible to find a solution which appeases everyone? Uh, think of this this way. If you replace fish with a dog, is there any humane way of taking dog to an environment where a dog would be struggling to breathe? And when people argue that they would release fish, in many cases it's just leading to death of the fish because they mutilate them. When they're trying to get the hook off the fish, they often rip off the guts and the throats of the sens uh, sensitive fish. And also when they handle the fish, they destroy the protective coat coating of them and leaving them way more vulnerable to predators. So fish suffer, fish die. It's a painful, absolutely unnecessary activity. If there's movement needed in angling, let's please do it in a far more creative way, particularly as that fraternity have been so giving in the past. Let's, let's, let's find a means of working with them to, to change those practices. And ultimately, changing practices means changing people's minds. And for all of its remarkable capacity in terms of intellect, imagination, ingenuity and adaptability, the human mind is not very good at changing itself sometimes, so we have to be a bit patient.